There are passionate people working to save animals. Hey, it's Jane from Animal Charity. I'm setting up at the clinic. It is quarter past midnight on a Sunday night. Um, the police department just dispatched Jess. And I'm sitting up here with him now waiting for the medical team to come. And he is not doing well. Here's the ongoing story of Animal Charity of Ohio Youngstown's hometown heroes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, Are you still sticking here with me. And I just wanted to say thank you. Thank you. I'm a scrub, but you still love me. You love me. I'm a scrub, but you still love me. You love me. Even though I don't make no money. You've been there when the times get ugly I'm a scrub but you still love me, you love me I'm a scrub but you still love me, you love me Even though I don't make no money You've been there when the times get ugly I'm broke And I just wanted to say thank you Thank you Let's watch this next story It's a good one My name is Jane McMurchy, and I'm the coordinator for Animal Charity of Ohio. When Lucky came in, he came in with another dog named Kane, and they were so emaciated, like so emaciated. And um, it was just a slow process of trying to get them to eat very small portions and small. We got that they were, Lucky was heartworm positive, and Kane was like a 14 year old large breed dog, mastiff mix, and I mean, it was just, they had so much against them already. They were older and had he had heartworm and they were skinny. Um, they were abandoned and um, yeah, he finally, we got him to a point where we were looking for a home for him and then he bloated and it was, it happened so fast that, and luckily Rachel, who was a, just a caretaker at the time, saw it happen. And they, they did, and the procedure ended up, once they opened him up, his spleen was involved in the torsion, and it instantly wrecked his spleen. So they had to reverse the blow, remove his spleen. Now he's a heartworm positive, emaciated senior dog, like the chances of him surviving. They're like, listen, we don't know. He wouldn't wake up from surgery. Like, we have no idea. I get there and he's out cold. It's 1030 at night and they're like, okay. And I'm like, is he gonna wake up? And they're like, we don't know. At that point, we had just started the seniors program. So he started going through training started going to the assisted living facilities. And the assisted living facility said, we want him. And I was like, okay, but he has heartworm. He smelled so bad. That long hair in a kennel does not do well for months. But yeah, no, they wanted him. And we were like, all right, well, we're not gonna adopt him to you. Like, you can keep him as a medical foster, as a heartworm foster, until we can make sure that he makes it through. And then we, so two weeks after he got there, we're like, okay, this is the, these are the pills you start with. This is how it's gonna work. And we're here are the dates. And they did, they brought him in and did one injection and did the next set of pills and the rest comes back for a second and third shot. They did a quick retest on him and he was negative. Made it through in just one shot instead of three. And he was our 2019 Hero Dog of the Year. Hey girls, stay over there for a minute while he pulls out. Lucky, what are you doing? Come on, Lucky. Oh, I love you. Yeah. I love you. 
We are in uh, Austintown, Ohio, just outside of Youngstown. I am the executive director um, of Victoria House Assisted Living. We are a 48 bed uh, assisted living and 24 bed uh, memory care unit. Well, actually we have uh, rescued several dogs over the, the my tenure here. I've been here almost 15 years, so um, Lucky would be our fourth addition. Lucky came and hit, he hit it off and he's been here ever since. He just roams, he has, you know, his, his little bed areas, but he goes, he has, no, he is really, his, the whole facility is his territory. Um, the only thing is, is that he doesn't go into our dining rooms with our residents, which from the very first day, um, he just followed that rule. He's been great. He, it was like he's been made for, or placed here for uh, a reason. So I believe in divine intervention. He is, definitely has an amazing story and it really, really hit the, the hearts of um, most of our residents. You know, a lot of our residents that move here have to leave their homes or have to leave their, you know, their fur, furry friends. So, you know, having a, a, a pet or an, a dog in the facility certainly um, helps with that transition. Well, first of all, Lucky came to us <laughs> very, very thin um, to the point that he, um, you could even see his like rib cage and stuff. Obviously you could see um, the residents have fattened him up. <laughs> He's almost about 99 pounds. So from that standpoint, but oh my gosh, the love and the smiles and the laughter and um, you know, they just look forward to seeing him almost you know, every day. Lucky and his brother Kane were both left um, at an abandoned house completely emaciated and Jess and Jane both went and saved both of them. They were both completely emaciated. They gave him, I think it was less than a 1% chance of living oh. and he survived it. Um, Jane from Animal Charity laid on the ground with him during his recovery. I'm just praying that he would not pass away within those first 24 hours after surgery. So I fostered him for a few days just to make sure that one, he was calm enough um, not jumping and he's been the best thing ever he he survived you know multiple health issues multiple horrible situations with humans and the joy and the love he brings is I can't even describe it I'm a girl but you still love me love me even though I don't make no money you've been there when the times get ugly and I just wanted to say thank you Thank you. Thank you for watching Hometown Heroes, featuring the stories of Animal Charity of Ohio. This is the World Animal Rescue Network. Dad, I hear you recording for the World Awareness Society. What is that? Yeah, you mean World Animal Awareness Society? Well, I'm a volunteer with the World Animal Awareness Society, Emerson. I volunteer my voice for use in animal rescue videos. And I don't know if you know this, but everyone at the World Animal Awareness Society is a volunteer. But what do they do? They're award-winning volunteer filmmakers who have interacted with 2,200 animal welfare nonprofits, including Maddie's Fund and Austin Pets Alive, providing information-rich content to more than 45 countries in the last 10 years. Dad, what's that mean? Okay, uh, how about this? They make short movies about animals that are in peril, that are hurting, you know, in bad shape or dying or homeless in the streets. They film rescuers doing heroic work so they can focus on saving lives. The World Animal Awareness Society posts the rescue videos on social media, and then they're broadcast on TV, sharing the heroic stories with people all over the world so they can understand what's really going on. Cool, I like animals. How do you start volunteering? Well, I met their director through social media and saw the work that they were doing and knew that I could help their cause. So I asked if I could volunteer. I am very fortunate to have really great jobs providing the voice to so many shows that I believe it's important to give back. Since I've been volunteering with the World Animal Awareness Society, they have created the seventh most influential YouTube channel for dog rescue lovers in the world, WA2S Films. That's so cool. Hey, Dad. Nice job. Do you think I could volunteer too? You already are, Em. You already are. You're watching the World Animal Awareness Society. Yep, that'll do, Emerson. That'll do. You're watching the World Animal 
Awareness. Society. <laughs>